Let's begin with the rule subsidence approximation. So here we assume pure roll motion about the X body axis. So if our plane starts out level at some time later, it'll have rolled one way, at some other time later, it'll have rolled the other way. So therefore only delta phi and delta phi dot, which is just delta p, are non-zero. This gives us a first order ordinary, ordinary differential equation which governs the system, which is delta p dot is L sub p delta p. So this gives a very simple solution that the uh, frequency is zero because it's a first order system and the magnitude of the real part of the eigenvector or eigenvalue is just LP, which is QS e squared over 2 i sub x u naught times CLP. So, or what is CLP? C is the coefficient of um, L, which is the x moment, so the roll moment, uh, with respect to uh, the roll angular velocity. CLP is always negative. So this mode is always a stable monotonic decay of roll. Now, we can estimate the value of CLP using lifting line theory. And from that, we can get that CLP is negative CL alpha times 1 twelfth times 1 plus 3 lambda over 1 plus lambda, where lambda here is the wing taper ratio. And it makes sense that the taper ratio is going to come into play since we're looking at a rolling moment. So you can see that if the taper ratio is 1, such that C tip and C root are equal, then we get 1 plus 4 over 1 plus 2, so this factor becomes 2, and CLP is just CL alpha over 6. Now for most aircraft, the time constant that's associated with this roll damping, which is 1 over sigma roll, is generally less than one second. So this is a very fast mode, which is always stable. Now let's look at the spiral mode approximation. Here we neglect roll and assume we, ha assume we have pu pure yawing motion. So to try to illustrate this, our aircraft starts out over here where the x body axis and the y body axis are like this then the path of flight will diverge from the desired flight path and 
the airplane will basically start turning away but it's pointing in the direction it's traveling. Now here, since there's uh, zero roll acceleration, so delta p dot equals zero, the four by four system reduces to another first order ordinary differential equation, which is zero equals LV delta V plus LR delta R, so that delta V is negative LR over LV delta R. And this comes from the second line of the 4 by 4 system of equations. If we put this into the last line, what we get is delta R dot equals NR minus NV times LR over LV times delta R. The eigenvalue associated with this system in its first order, so there will only be one, is approximately given by NR minus NV times LR over LV, which can be written using the coefficients as QS B squared over 2IZ U naught times CNR minus C and beta C L R over C L beta. Sorry, I've just realized all these L's and N's should be uh, the cursive L's. As we're introduced a couple lectures back. Right, so this is now consistent notation. So what this gives us is a monotonic yawing motion. In reality, there's always going to be some role coupled to the yaw in the 4x4 system, but in this approximation, we're neglecting that coupling. We can see that the spiral mode can either be stable, where sigma spiral is less than zero, or unstable, where sigma spiral is greater than zero, depending on the uh, signs and values of the four contributing stability derivatives that we see here. So the following factors generally increase spiral stability for conventional aircraft. We can increase vertical tail moment arm we can increase wing dihedral which I'll explain in just a moment or we can decrease CL naught the trim lift coefficient Dihedral is the angle the wings are shifted upward. So to illustrate this, if this is a fuselage, so this is the dihedral angle epsilon. Now, the uh, spiral eigenvalue scales approximately with the vertical tail area via CNR and CN beta. So increasing the vertical tail size will either magnify the stability or the instability that's already present. Express that as sigma spiral proportional to SV. Now, commonly, a lot of aircraft are slightly unstable in the spiral mode, 
but the instability is slow enough to be easily controlled by the pilot or autopilot. We can also estimate CLB, or sorry, CL beta and CLR um, using lifting line theory modified to account for side slip, dihedral, and taper. And the results of that are CL beta is negative CL alpha times epsilon over 6, 1 plus 2 lambda over 1 plus lambda. Lambda is again the taper ratio. And CLR is CL naught, the trim lift coefficient, divided by 4. These are the neglect contributions from the tail, but those are minor um, relative to the main wing contributions. Now the required yaw moment derivatives um, are obtained in a similar manner, but there's also now going to be a contribution from the fuselage, so C and beta is CL alpha of the vertical tail times the vertical tail volume coefficient plus C and beta of the fuselage. Just as a reminder, just like for the horizontal tail, the vertical tail volume coefficient is the area of the vertical tail times the distance from the wing aerodynamic center to the vertical tail over the vertical tail uh, or over the wing area and cord. Sorry, not over the cord, over the span. Now here, C and beta from the fuselage. given by minus 2 times the fuselage volume over S times B. C and R is minus 2 CL alpha of the vertical tail times the volume, vertical tail volume coefficient times LV over B. 